how you can find awesome free bait in lakes and rivers. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne and in this video I'm going to teach you how you can find amazing baits that will help you catch a feeder fish in your lake or your local lake or river. You may for some reason need to be able to get bait and you can't buy it at the shops or perhaps you don't have the money to spend on it. Could be all sorts of situations. You might be somewhere in the world and you need to be able to feed your family and you don't have the money to buy bait. Well I'm going to teach you how you can find natural baits and you can actually catch good quality food to eat. And I'm down by a lake today and I'm going to show you some of the baits that are available that I've used myself and are very good. So let's go for a little walk down into the water and see what we can find. In this particular video I'm focusing on saltwater rivers and lakes. However, if you don't live near a river or a lake, you might be near the ocean, I've made a fantastic video on free baits that you can find on the beach and on the rocks. So make sure that you check that out. Also, if this is helpful, this material, make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now the first bait that we're going to look at today is shrimp, which are really tiny little prawns. And I'm standing on the edge of the lake, you can see here, um, there's a lot of this ribbon weed. You can see this kind of ribbon weed. And this ribbon weed is an, uh, it's, it's an amazing ecosystem of life. And really it's where a lot of stuff starts, where all the little things live that the big fish feed on. And for most of the year, probably eight or nine months of the year, you can catch shrimp in the weeds. In the middle of winter, they seem to disappear, but for about nine months of the year it's good. At the moment it's summer, so really spring, summer and autumn. So I'm going to have a little look here now. See, I've got my net. You need like a fine net. You can buy them all, all different sizes. You want one that's square, that's got a flat bottom, because as you'll see, I'm going to put my net flat along the bottom and just drag it through the weeds to get some shrimp. So I'm just going to walk over this way a little bit. So I'm just picking a nice weedy spot. I'm going to get my net, like so. I'm going to put it so that I'm actually going to hold the bottom half part with my hands and I'm going to bounce it across the bottom through the weeds like that. We'll just see what we found. Now, just the, what's that wind? Now there's a couple of shrimp in here in this first little go. Now, I'm going to grab one. They're, they're like really tiny prawns, these things. Hopefully he doesn't jump out of my hand while I'm trying to film him. Can you see that little baby prawn? That's called a shrimp. In America they're called big prawn shrimps, but this is really small, it's a shrimp. <laughs> and uh, when I was a teenager, I used to fish with these for bait. They're only small, but you put maybe four on your hook and you're fishing fairly light in lakes like this and they are a fantastic bait for brim and whiting and you actually catch flathead on these as well. So in that first run, I actually only got, how many did I, did I only get one? I got a whole bunch of shells here. I actually only got the one little shrimp which I got in my hand. So let's have another go. Just have another little try. We'll go in the weeds over here. So I'm going to hold it like so because I want to make sure that the net is actually on the bottom. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to bounce it, bounce it and drag it like that. Oh, I didn't get anyone in that go. Let's try again. We'll go this way. Okay, I'm going to... So what have I got in here? Oh yeah, there's a couple in there. Oh, there's one, one, one bouncing around down there. Where is he? There, there he is, just there. He's hopping around. Oops. See that little, that little guy. Now, so that's a little bit of a lean run, that. So we'll have a couple more goes. See if we can have more success. Oh, there's a slightly fatter one here. Hang on. That one's pretty fat. Look at that. 
and there's another one just there. There's no, oops, there's two. There's, there's, that's tiny, but that's really, that's a good size one, this guy here. I'll just grab him. He's going to try and jump in the water. Um, see that little, see that guy, that, like a little baby prawn? If you're using a relatively small foot hook, you could actually, um, you could actually just use even two of those on like about a size four hook. But when you're fishing shallow sandbars and things, a couple of those guys, the fish actually love them. Sometimes you do this and you'll get 20 in one drag. It just varies depending on where you are. Yeah, there's one bouncing around in there, so there's not, then it's not heaps, but really, in a few minutes you could certainly get enough for bait. See that guy there? That guy. So it's not exactly difficult. Not just having a bit of a fiddle, but you know, if I spent 15, 20 minutes, I could get enough of those little shrimps to maybe have a, maybe a, even if you had enough for say a dozen baits. You could catch dinner with just a few of those shrimp. A couple of weeks ago, I caught some salmon off the beach and I filleted it and I threw my frames into the water. And then a couple of hours later, the fish frame that I'd thrown in the water was, had a swarm of those little shrimp all over it. <laughs> so it was amazing. They're actually incredible creatures because they clean up rotting flesh and things that die in the water. So that's a really good way of attracting shrimp and catching a whole heap quickly is if you have a fish that you've caught, you can chuck your skeleton in the water, leave it there in the weeds, and then all the shrimp will come and round and have a party, and you can catch them really easily. Now, another amazing bait that fish absolutely love is the humble oyster. And you can find oysters along the coast in salt water everywhere, in most lakes and rivers, at places like wharves, boat ramps, anywhere that, where there's rocks, uh, break walls, rock walls, there's always oysters everywhere. Like just here, there's a, whole, there's a few rocks just here that are covered in oysters. And we're actually standing beside a boat ramp. And along the edges of the boat ramp, uh, there's oysters growing along the edges of the boat ramp. So oysters occur in abundance. And they're actually great bait. And if you find some nice big ones, they're really good to eat as well. So there's a few oysters here. I'm gonna open one up. But you've gotta be really careful um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You've got to prise your knife in between the two, oh, I suppose, parts of an oyster and gently prise it open. You've got to be careful, you don't want to put too much pressure because if you slip and punch the oyster, you're going to cut yourself pretty bad. Or you can just find a small rock and gently crack the oysters to get the meat out. That's a really easy way to do it. So we're going to have a little look here. Um, there's some oysters here, so look, I'm just, just going to get here so I see how I've wedged my knife in here you can see it that's moving so I've just I've got to get into the muscle part of that shell okay so I've got that open let's just see what sort of meat oh look at that there's a fair bit of meat there actually see that see all of that meat I'll pull that out it's not a huge bait but with light line like three kilo line and a small hook. You can use maybe a couple of these for bait. And the oyster also, just like um, what you call pippies or other mollusks, they have a tough tongue part to them. They've got like a soft um, belly part and a tough tongue part. And you put your hook through the tough part. It helps hold it on the hook. And fish love it. This, is, this occurs naturally and it's what the fish eat. A lot of fish have got really tough teeth and believe it or not they can actually munch away on these sorts of rocks and oysters and things and actually get food when i was looking around here there's a number of the oysters that have already been bitten and cracked open by fish you so can find often in the estuaries that oysters aren't necessarily on rocks they actually grow in little clumps and in the case of this one you can see that it's, the oysters are formed around a cone shell and these are actually big enough to eat these oysters look at that that's a lovely good size oyster there you could eat that Another one on the other side over there, or you could use them for bait, for brim. And when I'm looking in the weeds just here, I can see little clumps of oysters just scattered in the weeds. I've got a friend who, with his wife, they actually, every year, they go and collect oysters that are not attached. 
and have a harvest and just go home and gorge themselves on oysters. So these are certainly readily available. They're free. All you need is a knife or a rock and you can get as many as you want in most places. Another wonderful natural bait which people use all the time and are readily available are crabs. And a really easy way to do it along the edge of any waterway when you find rocks along the edge of the water or even some logs, any, anything that crabs can hide under, you can find crabs. So there's a few rocks here. Um, normally at high tide the water comes right up here. So I'm going to have a look under this rock. Uh, we'll just see what we can find under here. All right, okay. Oh, look, there's a couple of crabs under there. Look at that. They're not spiders, they're crabs. <laughs> so look, these crabs are not massive, but you could use these for bait, Absol absolutely. Hey, come here. There's a, um, there's a very popular lure here in Australia called the cranker crab. And the cranker crab has been a revelation for brim fishermen. And essentially, that's like a real live cranker crab. Although it's not a cranker crab, you just put these on your hook instead. Uh, and they're a fantastic bait, so really easy to find and you will catch fish with these, especially when you fish around structure like wharves and bridge pylons etc. Pretty easy to find. These aren't very big but obviously uh, if I turned over a few more rocks I could find bigger ones. Oh look at that! Oh, there's crabs everywhere. Oh, look he's biting onto my knife. He's got the knife. <laughs> Depending on your size of your hook you could put one of these on or you could put two on for bait so how easy is that you know actually this is great it would be great fun for the kids to catch their own live crabs for bait another incredible bait that you can catch is octopus and not only are they a wonderful bait but gosh I love eating octopus and where I live in New South Wales the legal bag limit for octopus believe it or not is actually eight octopus per person per day I don't think I know anyone who's caught eight octopus and really one or two would be would be fine but a very simple method of catching octopus is simply you get an empty tin and I, all I've done is um, taken the beetroot out of this tin taken the wrapper off the outside I've drilled a hole in the side at the top here I've tied this fishing line to it very very basic and then I've drilled a few holes in the bottom as well uh, that's just to make it sink a little bit quicker when it gets out in the water and essentially the principle is this octopus are always looking for little crevices and hidey holes and places to make their home so you chuck a can like this out in the water <clears throat> and leave it overnight or for a couple of days and octopus come crawling along and think oh they think awesome I've got a new, I've got a new home and they reverse themselves in there and they stay in there all you do is you come along in the morning and you just pull it in and you you put your hole in the open part end and you just pull that in relatively quickly the octopus doesn't really have time to get out and that's how you catch octopus now make sure that when you put this in the water you put it somewhere that someone's not going to tread on it and really when we put these out we are a little bit specific as to where we put it in the water a great place is near um, wharves and bridges where there are pylons there's always lots of octopus there um, in the general body of a lake around the edge of weed, ba weed beds is a really good spot so where I'm going to throw this is just out beyond the weeds I'm not going to put it on a sandy area or anywhere where I think people are going to be running around where they might tread on a sharp tin I've got two of these that I've set up on some hand lines and I'm going to chuck them out now into the water along the shore here there's a weed bank I'm just going to walk out a little bit and lob the tin out let it sink down to the bottom and I'm going to hide my hand reel and leave them, uh, leave them overnight Okay, so now I'm going to I'm just carefully reel this line off. Just let that lie where it is. Now where I've uh, where I am here in this um, in this tidal lake, there's virtually no current here. Um, so if you were intending to do this in a place where there was current, you'd probably need to have some lead in the bottom of your tin to hold it in position. But here there's no tidal current or virtually no tidal current, so it's just going to sit there nicely waiting for an octopus to come along and hide in there. So now I'm just going to um, get my line here and hide him in the bushes. 
Well, there you have it. We're back here two days later. Now I'm going to go and check my lines. Okay, so nothing hiding in there. I've got another one, so I'm just going to try that one as well. I've checked my two octopus traps that I put out. Um, this one didn't have anything in it. The other one was actually gone. There was nothing on the end of my line, so I don't know what happened with that. But in my research on catching octopus, this is a centuries-old method where they used this, or they used to use clay pots, and they would put a row of clay pots in the water, and the octopus would climb in and make it their home. Also, they often put some bait, like a crab or something that octopus likes, in the bottom of the tin. So that's something that I'm going to do. I'm going to put a bait in a couple of these tins and put them out in a, a likely spot where there's some rocks and things and with a view to catching some octopus. So it's definitely what has been done for centuries and it works. On this occasion today, didn't find any, but I'm going to keep at it and hopefully catch an abundance to eat and use for bait. Another excellent bait that you can find in many estuaries is what we call cockles and there's different um, types of shells. They're like a, almost like a, like a mini clam. Um, and they, like for example, you can see along the shore here how many empty cockle shells they, there are. I'll just grab one here, actually, well that one was joined together, but... Um, they have two halves to them, that's what a cockle shell looks like. I'll grab another one, you can see down here there's one here that's kind of in its piece. Although I don't expect that that one's alive, I think it's probably full of sand. You can see that's quite large that cockle and when you open them up they have meat on the inside and the indigenous actually used to collect these and eat them by the hundreds. Uh, they're also a very good bait for a variety of species. Brim and flathead really like them. So there are many different uh, in lots of lakes and rivers very similar to this. Some of them are a different shape and also all around the world these types of you know, I think they're called a bivalve. These types of things live in estuary systems all around the world and they're very good for bait and also you can eat them as well. So, I think this guy is dead. Yeah. Yeah, see look, I've just opened him up and he's got sand on the inside. But you can see that there's so many of them all along the shore here. They attach themselves to weed. Like there's some weed growing here and if you pick up um, the weed, like in this case, it has a cockle attached to it, but it's, it's a dead one, it's half a cockle. But usually what you do is you look for the weed in the water and there's usually a cockle attached to the end of it. That's how you find them. But we're going to go and search for some other estuary baits. That, that is what's called a squirt worm or a case worm, swimming through the water. It's come out of its little home. Good spotting, Adam. Now I'm going to catch this guy. Can you see that worm? Look, he's actually squirting. This is how I think they reproduce. You can see he squirted out like a creamy type material into the water in my hand. But that is actually an amazing bait, these worms. They're called case worms or squirt worms. And you find them on the, in the sandy areas on the, on the, near the shore. So we're going to go and look for some shortly and I'll show you how to find them. One of the ways that you find them is that they actually have, they create like a little case that the worms live in. And they're quite obvious. And I've got some just here to show you, so we're gonna have a look. Um, if you can see where I'm pointing with my finger, can you see there's these like cases with tiny little holes in the end? And that shows a colony of case worms or squirt worms. They have this case which is like sand, it's like a tube and they must put some sort of um, saliva or something to make this sandy tube, and they live in that. And one of the ways you catch them is, the reason you call them squirt worms, is if you get a, a, a tin like this, and you push it into the sand, the air going into the sand goes through their holes and they go boop, and pop back out of the sand again. So I'm gonna try that. Also, you can use a yabby pump as well, just to suck them out onto the sand. So we're just gonna have a little look, look and see what we can find here. I'm going to try both methods. It's better if it's dry when you do this, but I'm going to try it near the water. 
here and I'm going to cover the holes in this tin and go okay so I didn't really see any air come up there so I'm going to try the yabby pump instead so I'm going to get my yabby pump here and oh look at that hang on here's a good one I'm just I'm going to rinse him I'll just rinse him off so we can see him there's actually a worm see that case is that one that's another one there that's what the case looks like the casing now this casing here has a worm inside it so I'm um, oh look there he is he came out look so he's come out of the case can you see that oh, I'm just gonna move it can you see that Wrigley worm look at that that is a absolutely stellar whiting bait and where I live in New South Wales Australia these case worms can occur in many thousands you put one of them on a small hook and flick it out they're very good bait actually I'm going to pick him up he's actually broken so in the case there where he broke you'd use this fat part where he's crawling around for some reason they're a great estuary bait in winter so there you have it squirt worms or case worms I can see heaps of holes here so in this video I've shown you some amazing baits that you can find in saltwater estuaries and really there's so many different types if you can't find one type of bait there's certainly lots of others you know in the very short period of time that I've made this video we thought we found plenty of bait to go fishing so hundred percent if you can't buy bait if you don't have the money to buy bait really wherever you are in the world in whatever water systems is going to be creatures that you can use for bait also many of them you can actually eat yourselves I love doing this sort of thing if this content has been helpful make sure that you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because it really helps my channel if there are some baits that I've left out in your area please let me know in the comments and if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you very soon in the next video